how to create latent action uh, blueprint nodes with C++ in Unreal, uh, because even though a delay is pretty fun, a delay that does something is even better. And actually, there are two main ways to create a latent uh, blueprint nodes. There is the latent action that we're going to see today, and also the blueprint async action that we're going to see in the next video. So we're going to test them both and compare them together and see which one works best. So let's get to it. And here is our other file. But before jumping in the code, we're going to start by taking a look at all the upsides and downsides of the latent action compared to the blueprint async action. These are my upsides and downsides. For me, some of them are more important than others. But maybe for you, it's not going to be the same because it depends on you needs. But anyway, so the first upside is that you can easily get the currently running action for that blueprint node. For example, if you started the delay, you can know that the delay already started and you don't have to start it again. You can instead wait for the delay to be over before starting a new delay. Uh, so in my case, I really like that upside because, well, that's pretty useful to know if my node already exists before trying to run it again. Then related to the previous point, it allows us to add multiple input execution pin to modify the current action that is currently running. So for example, if a delay is running and you want to cancel it, well, you can. Uh, then it also comes with a description feature. So when you're debugging your blueprint, you can uh, look at the latent node and then you can write some text above the latent node while the job is running to give more information about the current process. And I really find that it really helps uh, debugging the code. Then finally, you can control exactly when the latent action object is destroyed. Once the action is completed, it's going to destroy the object automatically for you. And it's not going to happen later on during the garbage collecting. It's really going to happen at the same time as the action is completed. And that's really cool, in my opinion, because you know what's happening. Yeah. Then for the downsides, what do we have? Well, it doesn't have a direct output execution pin when you call the function, which means that when you call the Blueprint node, there's, let's say, four output pins. And these execution pins are created by you and triggered also by you which means that if you have a bug in your code somewhere, no execution pin is going to be triggered and the blueprint flow is going to stop right there. It might not be an issue if you don't have any bug in your code, but if it happens, sometimes it's a little bit confusing if the blueprint flow never finishes. The next downside is that the progress of the action, so everything updating the action or triggering the execution pin must be done inside the update operation function. That function is called every frame. It's like a tick while the action is running. And if let's say, for example, the user wants to cancel the action, the cancel is not going to happen right away. It's going to happen on the next frame. And sometimes that's not something that we want. And then related to the previous point, it's also not possible to fire two different output execution pin at the same time. So during one update operation, you can only call one output pin. And that means that if let's say you have two output execution pin, one that's going to be called when the value is updated and one when the function is completed. In that case, you won't be able to call the update and then the completed on the same frame. If you want to call both, you'll need to call the update, wait a frame, and then call the completed. It's also a little bit annoying, in my opinion. And finally, the last downside is that you don't have an actual object that you can use in Blueprint. You have the function that is inside the event graph. You can pull the data from there. You can call any input execution pin while the function is running, but you cannot have a reference to that node and then use it somewhere else in the code. You really have to pull the data from the node directly and that will make it more difficult to organize your blueprint so okay that's it for the upsides and downsides and then i have a few extra additional notes that don't really matter but there are some extra information that you might be interested in the first one is that to set up a latent action you need to write more code than a blueprint ac action it doesn't really matter but it's something you might want to keep in mind and the final point is that to create additional input and output execution pin it's going to be the exact same way as when you're creating input and output execution pin for normal functions not only latent functions. And I think that's pretty nice to know. Okay, I guess we're done talking. Now it's time to jump in the code for real. And the first thing we're going to need is a little link to right here at the top, the latent actions.h. Because if we want to create a latent action, we need to create an object which is going to be a child of the latent action parent. So we need to include the parent right here to create our object. That parent is inside the engine module. So we're just going to jump in the build.cs file to make sure that it's already in there. And it should already be in there like mine. It's already in there. It's a default module. Perfect. Let's jump back in the header file. 
And now we're going to scroll down all the way here. So here we have our blueprint function library that we're going to use to define our latent function. And then we have our little object right here, which is the child of f pending latent action. That's the parent class of all the latent action in the engine. And obviously, if we want to create a latent action, we have to make a child of that class. And then that's what I'm doing right here, f latent to count seconds. That's going to be my action. I'm going to keep it super simple. What I want to do with this action is simply count the seconds with a little interval in between the updates of the timer. So for example, if I want to count uh, from 0 to 5, I'm going to count from 0 to 5. And I want my timer to be updated every second. It's just going to count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 1 every second. And then same thing, if we wanted to have an interval of 0.5, it's going to count uh, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, etc. So that's what I want my function to do. And we're going to do the same exact behavior in the next video. We're really going to compare the two strategies together with the exact same requirements. But for today, we're going to focus on this one right here, the F latent count seconds. So to count seconds, I'm going to create a new blueprint function right here. And I want my blueprint function to have multiple input and output execution pin. And the way we're going to do that is obviously by using enums. So I have two enums right here. The first one is for my input pins. I want to be able to start my function. I want to be able to increment the current number that is inside my function and also to be able to cancel my function. So I'm going to start my timer. If I want to manually increment the timer, I can. And if I want to cancel the timer, I also can. Perfect. And as output, which is the second enum that I have right here, I want to be able to receive more information about the current process. So I want to be notified when the timer started. This is a little bit to compensate the lack of a default output execution pin. If I want to be able to execute the rest of my code from somewhere, it's going to be from the unstarted pin when the timer starts. Then I also want to be updated when the timer is updated. So unupdated, uncancelled, and also uncompleted. So that's where I'll be able to execute different parts of my blueprint depending if the timer started, updated, cancelled, or completed. Here we go. So these are the two enums we're going to use inside our little function we're going to create. And it is this one right here. Oh, wait, it's a little bit too big. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And here we go. This is the function we're going to create today. And yeah, there's a lot of things in there. And actually, it's not really supposed to be on four lines. It's just because I didn't have enough room on my screen. This two function is supposed to be on one line. And same thing for this function right here. But right now, you can see everything in one screen. And that's awesome. But it still looks a little bit complicated, even though actually it's not that complicated. There's just a lot of metas in the U function right here. So in my U function, it's going to be blueprint callable as usual. It's going to have a category as usual. Oh, there's nothing fancy in there, but then there's a lot of metas, a lot, a lot, a lot of metas. And I'm going to tell you what they are doing. The first one, the world context is just to assign this object right here to the world context property. I'm just telling the world context property to be linked to the variable name, the world context. And that's going to be my U object right here. We're going to use that object to retrieve the latent action manager that is currently in the world. And we're going to need that one to well trigger our latent action. Then I want my function to be a latent function. And to do that, we need to provide the latent meta right there. That's it. It's done. And we also need to provide the latent info. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just assigning my variable latent info to this property right here, which is also named the latent info. So I'm just linking them both together. And finally, the last meta is expand the enum as exec. And that's going to tell Unreal to create additional input and output execution pin based on those enums that we have right here. We have the input pins enum, that is my variable right here. And we have the output pins enum that I have right here. For the output pins, make sure that it is a reference, otherwise it's not going to work. Output pins of a function needs to be a reference. So right here, they are a reference. And then after this big macro, we have our actual function. So latent count second, it's going to be a static void as usual. We have the U object, which is the world context, the latent info that is required for a latent function. So you need to input that variable if you want to create a latent function. And it's going to be used to retrieve the blueprint node that needs to be executed once the latent action is completed. So that's pretty much the information of the blueprint node in your graph to know which node you want to call at the end of the function. And then you have the input and output execution pin. And then finally, we have the real variables. So all the variables I want to provide to my actual action. So to do my work, I'm going to need to know which interval at which I want to increment my timer. So 0.5 seconds, 1 seconds, 2 seconds, etc. 
and then I'm going to increment my timer and it's going to stop at the final time. So that's going to be the final time right here. Then I want to be able to return the current time to the user every time it gets updated. So here I have my out current time. It's going to be a reference because I want my user to be able to pull it from the blueprint node. And same thing for the status of my action. So be out of success to know if it's a success. And finally, out info message to have more information about the current process. So this one, that one, and this one are all references because because I want my user to retrieve them from somewhere else in the blueprint. Okay, perfect. So this was to create our little function. And that's actually not doing much. There's just a lot of parameters in there. It looks a little bit intimidating, but it's not that bad. Good. Okay, we created our function and that function is going to create an object and everything else is going to happen inside that object. This function is just going to be there to create the object. Everything else must happen inside this object right here. So we're going to scroll down and see what we need for that object. Well, we're not going to need much. We need to first create all the variables we're going to need to do the logic of the function. So in my case, I'm just going to recreate all the variables we provided to our blueprint function. So we have the timer interval, the timer final time, and the timer current time, the success, and info message. All those variables are the one we added as input and output of our blueprint node, and I want to be able to reference them in my action. Obviously, if your blueprint node adds some references, so for example, this one right here, that one, and this one, make sure that they are also references right here. Otherwise, modifying those are not going to modify the blueprint node. You have to use the same reference all the way from the beginning to the end to be able to modify that reference, obviously. So these are all the variables provided from the blueprint node. Then there's another category of variable, which are actually just the variables that I'm going to need to execute the logic of my action. Uh, so I'm going to need the timer current time interval to calculate my current interval. Uh, I want to also know if it's the first call of the function to be able to trigger the unstarted event. And finally, I also have a boolean that we can toggle to true if we want to cancel the action because we cannot directly cancel the action. We have to set a flag somewhere that says, hey, I want to cancel my action. And then on the next frame, the action can cancel itself. We cannot cancel it from the outside. Okay, so these are all the variables I'm going to need to also create my logic. But then we have the real variables, the ones that are required. And to create a latent action, what do you need? Well, you need first the latent action info to be able to update the blueprint node once the action is completed, obviously. And you also need, if you want your output to have multiple execution pin and in them, that lets you decide which execution pin is going to be called. And in my case, I want to have multiple execution pin. I want to have the unstarted, completed, fail, update. So I have to create myself this little variable right here, which is pretty much the same as the ones at the top. It's just a reference to another variable that is on my blueprint node. And actually, that's it. These are all the variables we're going to need to create our action today. And to set those variables more easily, I'm going to use the constructor. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here. And here is my constructor. There's a bunch of variables in there, and they are all the same as the variables that we have at the top. So when I construct my object, I'm going to provide the latent info, the output pins, the interval, final time, out current time, out success, and out information. And I'm going to use them to set all those variables that we have at the top. All those variables are going to easily be set. And at the same time, I'm just going to make sure to reset all the variables that are coming as the reference because since it's a reference, it's possible that this already has a value in there. So I want to override those values to make sure that they are not polluted with random data in them. So my output as default, I'm going to set it to unstarted. My current time, I'm going to set it to zero. My B success, I'm going to set it to false. And my information is just going to be empty. Here we go. That's it. All the reference variables are going to be reset properly. Perfect. Okay. We have our action. It has a bunch of variables in there. Now it's time to call the logic. And the way we're going to do that is first by scrolling down a little bit more. And we have to do it inside the update operation. That's going to be the tick of our action. And everything has to be in there. Virtual void update operation. We provide a latent response. And that's it. But actually, before we jump in the CPP, there's another thing you can override in the parent. And it is the get description function. And that's one of my favorite features. Uh, that function is only available when you are in the editor. So here I'm just going to wrap it inside a with editor macro right here. So if a with editor and if at the bottom right here. So everything in there is going to be compiled only when you are in the editor. And the function is a virtual f string get the description const override. So we're overriding a function in the parent once again. And that function is simply going to give you the possibility to write some text above the blueprint node while the action is running. And that's probably 
something you already seen before. Uh, for example, the delay node, uh, when you debug it in the editor, you can see how much time is left on the timer before executing the next piece of code. And that's exactly the same thing we're going to do right here. I'm just going to display a little piece of text that says the current time of my timer and the final time of my timer. That way, I'll be able to know when the timer is about to be completed. Perfect. OK, we wrote 150 lines and actually we're done with the header file. Yes, now we can finally jump in the CPP. So let's go in there. And here we just have our two little functions that we just created. So the latent count second and the update operation. The latent count second is simply going to create the object and everything else is going to happen inside the update. So the counting of the seconds is really going to happen right here. This is really just to start the latent action. But before we start coding those two functions, I'm just going to Add a little include right here at the top, which is going to be the latent action manager to be able to register the new action we're going to create. And that's it. That's the only include we're going to need. And it is inside the engine module, which you already validated that is inside the build.cs file. So we're done with the include. Now for the function, the latent counts again, what's the first thing we have to do? Well, we have to retrieve the world to be able to retrieve the latent action manager. So here I'm just going to ask my G engine to get the world context from object. The object is going to be the world context object we receive as input. And if that object is not valid, I'm going to return a null. And that function is going to set the world variable inside my little variable right here. If the world is not valid, in my case, I'm going to also check if I'm currently in the editor. So if my world is null, but I am in the editor, then I'm going to take the the world context of the editor. So g editor, get editor, world context, get world. That's going to give me the world currently open in the editor. And that's going to be good enough for our need because we only want the world to retrieve the latent action manager. So any world would work as long as the world is valid, obviously. But that also means that if the world is not valid, I cannot continue with my logic. I have to return right here. So if the world is equal to null, here I'm just going to set the state of my function. So it was not a success, so it was false. And I have a little bit more information about my action. I was not able to create my action because the world is not valid. And actually, on top of that, I'm also going to print an error message. Because the main problem of the latent action, in my opinion, is that they are not going to execute any other execution pin from here. This function really just receives the blueprint flow and is not able to trigger any output execution pin. The output execution pin must be triggered inside the update operation function, not inside the blueprint functions that create the latent action. It has to be triggered from the update operation function. And in our case, we don't have access to the update operation function because the object doesn't exist yet. We cannot create the objects because we don't have access to the world. And that means that, well, we cannot trigger an output pin. So yeah, that's annoying. And that's why I'm taking the time to write an error message because I want my user to know that the action failed and I was not able to create the latent action, which also means that I'm not able to continue executing the blueprint flow. It's going to stop right here. So here I'm just going to return. I'm going to give a bit more information to my user, but that's it. There's nothing else I can do from here. But that's just if the world doesn't exist. If the world exists, then uh, there's no problem. We can get the latent action manager from the world. So world the get latent action manager. And from there, we have access to the current action. If it's already running in the world, I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here. We can access the existing action from the latent action manager if it's still running. So if you started a delay and the delay is not over, well, it's going to still exist and you can retrieve it. But if the delay is completed, then the delay doesn't exist anymore. It's completed. So the existing action that I have right here is going to be null, obviously. So latent action manager, find existing action. The class of the action we're going to look for is the class of our action. And then we also have to provide the latent info to that function. The latent info is simply the structure that is going to be automatically populated when we call the blueprint function. So you don't really have to worry about it. You just have to keep it safe somewhere in case you need it in the future. So latent info dot call back target and latent info dot UUID. These are the informations required by the find existing action function that's going to find the current instance of the latent count seconds matching those information right here. And that's going to give you the existing action. That's the blueprint node in your graph that is currently running. Yeah, you have the node, but then what do you want to do with it? Well, you just want to execute your code. And to execute my code, since in my case I have multiple input execution pin, I'm going to do different things depending which execution pin was called. So in my case, I have a pin that wants to start my timer. So if the input pin is equal to start, then I'm going to try to start my timer. But I don't want to start it if it's already running. So here, I'm just going to check if my existing action is equal to null. So if my timer is not already running, and if so, I'm just going to start my new timer. 
And by starting a new timer, I mean creating a new action and executing its logic. So in my case, I'm going to create a new F latent account seconds, which is my class that I have right here again. So create a new instance of that object. Don't worry about needing to delete that action. It's going to be automatically deleted by Unreal once the action is completed. You just have to create it, give it to Unreal, and then it's going to be deleted automatically for you. You don't have to worry and delete it later. It's going to be done automatically for you. So create a new instance of F latent count second. You provide all the variables required by the constructor. So everything that I receive as input for this function. And that's going to give me my little action object right here. That action object, I can then give it to the latent action manager. So latent action manager dot add new action, and we're going to give it our new action. And then the manager is going to execute the action for us. So add new action, you have to provide the latent info to that action. So same thing, the callback target and the UID. And then you also have to provide the action, obviously. And then the manager is going to run the action for you. Hey, that's it. We're done with the start. We started our action. But what if the input pin was not a start? For example, what if it was an increment? In that case, so if else my input pin is equal to increment, I want to manually increment the timer in my action. So what I'm going to do is check if my existing action exists. If it doesn't exist, I cannot increment the timer, obviously. So if existing action is not equal to null pointer, then I'm I'm just going to take the current timer from the action and do a plus equal one to increment it by one and that's it we incremented the timer and then during the next update operation the timer is going to check its current value and if for some reason this manual update completed the timer it's just going to call the completed pin so we don't have to worry about it here because well we cannot do anything in this function right here it's really just to create a link between the input pins of our function and the actual object running the action here i'm manually incrementing my number. And the last action I could do with my function is to cancel my timer. So that's what I'm going to do right here. If my input pin is equal to cancel, if my existing action is not equal to null, I'm going to set the boolean that says that we want to cancel to true. That way, in the next frame, in the next update operation, it's going to cancel the action. And that's it for the blueprint function. We cannot do anything else from here. We cannot even call any execution pin. We just have to let it go. The action is running and it's not a problem anymore. Everything else should happen inside the update operation. And that's what we're going to take a look at. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit right here. We have the update operation. This little guy is really just a tick. It's called every frame and we're going to use it to keep track of the current state of our action and trigger different execution pin if we need to. So update operation, the first thing I'm going to do in there is check if we want to cancel the action because if the user wanted to cancel the action, we're going to do it as soon as we can. So here I'm checking, okay, do I want to cancel my action? Yes. Oh, okay, let's cancel it. I'm going to still say that my action was a success. I'm going to give a bit more information to my user to say that my latent action counts again was a success, it was cancelled by the user. Perfect. I cancelled my operation. Actually, no, nothing is done yet. We have to cancel it. And to cancel it, we have to do two things. We have to first set which execution pin we want to call. In my case, I want to call the uncancelled execution pin. So I'm going to set my variable output to be equal to uncancelled. And that's going to trigger the uncancelled execution pin as soon as the function is completed. I stay as soon as the function is completed because it's true. You cannot call multiple output execution pins during the same update. So if you wanted, for example, to call updated right here, you cannot. You have to call uncancelled or you have to call unupdated. And then on the next frame, you can call the other one. You cannot call both on the same frame. Here I'm deciding which pin I want to call. I want to call the uncancelled pin. And to do the actual call of the execution pin, we have to call the finish and trigger if function finish because we want to complete our action at the same time. Uh, when we call finish, it's going to destroy the current object once the function is done. So it's going to wait until the end of the update operation function. And once the function is completed, it's going to destroy the current object. Uh, actually, it's going to trigger the execution pin first and then destroy the object. But that doesn't really matter. So response.finish and trigger if we're going to finish the action if this little boolean right here is true. In my case, I'm setting it to true because I already know that I want to finish my action. So I'm setting it to true automatically right here. And then I have to provide all the latent action information. So I have everything here. I have the execution function, I have the linkage, and I have the callback. So 
everything that is needed by Unreal to know which Blueprint node is the next node to execute in the event graph is contained inside all of those little variables right here. So we have to provide them back to Unreal so we knows which function to call and that's it. Now we can just return. You don't have to stop the function right here, but in my case, I don't want to do anything else if I want to cancel my action. So I'm just going to return right away. Perfect. That was if I wanted to cancel my action. I'm just going to set my state to cancel, decide which execution pin I want to trigger and then trigger that execution pin obviously and also really important i'm going to destroy my action object because i'm done with it i don't want it to keep running so i'm just going to destroy it right here by calling finish perfect so first thing is done then if we didn't want to cancel our action then it's time to do the actual logic actually if my timer is running i want to increment the current time interval to keep track how long my action has been running and that's actually what i want to do in this action i want to calculate time so i'm going to calculate time and that's what i'm doing right here so current time timer interval plus equal rest response elapsed time which is pretty much delta time so i'm adding that inside my variable right here and then i want to be able to know if the current timer time interval reached a new interval so i'm going to do a little check right here if the current timer time interval is greater or equal than the timer interval i'm going to set this little rule to true so b interval will reach so we reach a new interval if for example my interval was two seconds i'm going to wait until two seconds and then that's going to tell me okay i reached two seconds and if i reach two seconds what do i want to do well i want to increment the actual timer this is the timer that is on the blueprint node so if the user wants to know which time it is at the moment i'm going to increment it by interval so that's what i'm going to do right here if my interval is reached i'm going to increment my timer by the actual timer interval so it's going to make it jump a little bit higher and then i'm also going to reduce the timer interval from my variable that way it's going to go back down under the interval and then it's going to go back up slowly back up to the interval bring it back down go back up bring it back down so we're just going to notify the user every interval and not every frame but that's going to be a little bit later before telling my user that the number was updated i want to make sure that if it's the first call the first time that update operation is called i'm going to call a different execution pin i'm going to call the unstarted execution pin and that's what i'm doing right here so if it was the first call i'm going to set my variable back to false because i want it to happen only once so if it's the first call i'm setting the first call to false and then i'm just going to say that it was a success or actually it is currently a success because the latent action actually just started so it started right here and then i'm going to decide which pin i want to trigger it's going to be the unstarted pin and i'm going to trigger my pin and this time i'm just going to trigger my pin i'm not going to finish and trigger i'm just going to trigger it as is because we don't want to finish the action the action is not completed yet it's just started uh, and we don't want to destroy the object as soon as it starts uh, that will not make sense so here instead i'm just going to call trigger link same thing we also have to provide all those information right here so i'm just going to provide them to trigger link and that's going to trigger the unstarted execution pin and that's it i'm just going to return right here also so we have two ways to trigger execution pin. We have the finish and trigger if that's going to destroy the object and then trigger an execution pin and also the trigger link function. In both those cases, though, it's the same thing. You can only call one trigger link per update operation. So don't try to call one and then the other. I tried a bunch of time. It doesn't work. You can only call one execution pin per update operation. Keep that in mind. So did we want to cancel our timer? No. Okay, good. We skipped that. Uh, we incremented the timer, which is actually the actual logic of our timer. So if you wanted to have a different action, uh, this is where you're going to inject your code and modify this and do something else with it, obviously. And then I'm going to check if it, this was the first call because I wanted to be able to notify my user if it's the first call or any subsequent update call. So here I have a little check to check if it's the first call. But if it's not the first call, then I can really just update my user every time the timer gets updated so i'm going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to do that so here if it's not the first call i'm going to check okay is my action done actually because it was not the first call so maybe we're done calculating our timer so if my timer current time is greater or equal than the timer final time it means that my action is actually completed and it's not just a basic update so here i'm just going to say that it was a success my action is completed i'm going to decide which execution pin i'm going to call and this time i'm going to call the uncomplete completed execution pin obviously because my action is completed and i'm also going to call the finish and trigger if function once again because my action is completed i don't want it to keep living in space forever and ever and ever i want to destroy that object as soon as i'm done with it
it and that's what finish is going to do it's going to destroy the object the condition is going to be true because we already checked it right here so we don't have to check it once again and we also have to provide all the latent info and that's it now we're going to finish our action because it's actually completed and we're going to trigger the proper execution pin that's it good and the last thing i wanted to do is to update my user in the case that well the action is not completed and also that a new interval is reached because i don't want to update my user every frame i just want to update him every interval so here i'm checking if i reached a new interval in that frame did i okay good then i'm going to be able to decide which pin i want to execute in my case i'm executing the unupdated obviously and i'm going to trigger my link i'm not going to destroy my object i'm just going to trigger my link that way the user knows that it was updated and actually finally that's it that's it for the code let's jump in unreal to test if it works and here i am in unreal and we're not gonna need any scenes or anything complicated because we're just gonna watch our timer going up and we're gonna do that inside a little user interface right here so here i have a few elements i have first a spin box that lets me control the interval because i want to be able to modify that why not same thing for the final time i want to decide where my timer is going to end i'm going to be able to set that using that spin box then i have a number in the middle of my screen that is is going to be updated every interval so while my timer is running it's going to update this little number right here and finally i have three buttons one to start my timer cancel my timer and increase my current timer there we go so that's the user interface we're going to use and if i go see my graph we can see that hey it's super simple it's really 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 simple actually compared to the c we just wrote that one is super simple and that's awesome that's really what i like about the latent action is that everything is contained inside this little node right here we don't have to worry about anything else everything is here we have our latent count seconds right here we have three different input pins depending which button we're clicking on so start increase or cancel is going to call start increment or cancel and finally i have the two floats uh, that i can also provide so the two floats coming from my spin boxes the interval and the final and while my function is running it's going to call different output execution pins so when my function started, it's going to call the started execution pin. When my function gets updated, it's going to call updated. When it's canceled, it's going to call canceled. And when it's completed, it's going to call completed. In my case, I'm not doing any different logic in all those cases. I'm just going to do the same exact thing all the time, but you'll see that all the different things are going to be triggered in different situations. So here I'm going to update my information message written on my screen. And then I'm going to also update the number in the middle of my user interface. So it has the latest current time. So let's go see how it goes. I'm going to run my authority widget. There we go. I have my widget right here. I'm going to select it at the top so we can see what's happening when I run my code. And here we go. I'm set. So now I can, let's say, cancel my timer. Here we go. Uh, okay, it executed something, but it didn't cancel anything because my timer is not running. Obviously, perfect. Same thing if I increase my timer. Uh, my timer doesn't exist, so I cannot increase it. Okay, makes sense. And then what happens if I click on start? Well, it starts a timer. We can see the timer here going up. We can see the code is running at the top. That's pretty cool. I can start my timer again. Once it's completed, it's going to call the updated pin every time it gets updated. And it's also going to update this little debug message right here at the top and that's a description function i was talking about and that's pretty useful if you want to know the state of your current action okay so it gets a bit it works it works what happens if i try to spam the start timer but well, it doesn't do anything because my timer is already running so it's not going to start a new one it's just going to wait until the previous one is completed so perfect that works as expected perfect what if i try to change the interval so i'm going to bring them down a little bit start my timer here we go the interval are way smaller and now it gets updated way more often and same thing i can update my final time so i can tell to say and that's seven seconds and it will end that seven seconds perfect it worked pretty well good now i know that i can start my timer and it's going to complete properly okay what happened if i try to cancel my timer so i'm going to call my start and then i'm going to cancel it there we go it canceled my timer so i can start it and then wait a little bit and then cancel my timer we can see that it triggers the cancel pin it works it stopped the timer perfectly and that's exactly what we wanted okay it works as expected what if i start my timer and then i try to increase the number manually we can see that hey the number didn't make sense because i spammed the button and did a big jump right here increase 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 and the next update it tells us that the number increased a lot so yeah it seemed to work i can put the number a little bit bigger the interval a bit bigger i mean so if i start my timer and then i can spam my increase a bunch of times oh it's now six and then it's eight 
So it starts, it should be 2.25, but if I spam my click button, we can see that, hey, now it's seven point something. And if I spam it real fast, it gets to seven in three seconds because, well, I'm spamming it way too fast. There we go. So great, uh, everything seems to work. Actually, I can start my timer, I can let it run, I can cancel it if I want to. And now you know how to create a latent action with C++. So that's gonna be it for today's video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,